hello dear student friends so in today's class we will be learning about uh, 10th class chapter 6 life processes in that transportation in the previous class we studied about the basic concept of life processes that uh, these processes are necessary to keep an organism living in case of multicellular organisms like us human being our body has a organ grade of body organization so we have division of labor as you have studied it in your previous year ninth class that uh, there is a division of labor and uh, each cell each organ and the tissue are performing their function at their own places whereas our body promises them to transport all the required uh, nutrients and uh, respiratory gases uh, to the site where they are functioning so that they can function normally suppose there is a cell which is functioning uh, a, a muscle cell which is functioning in your legs okay so for it to perform uh, all the function normally it requires food so these must these cells they cannot travel from uh, in our body so instead our body has made an arrangement so that uh, they can transport the materials that is nutrients and gases to those muscles so for this main purpose there is a development of a transport system which is also called as circulatory system it is also called as a circulatory system okay so the substances are absorbed in one part of the body and carried to other parts through various means so mainly in case of circulation means like uh, uh, if you eat something it is digested in your digestive system that is in the stomach and if you when you take in the atmospheric gases then the oxygen is uh, extracted in our lungs where these materials has to be transported to different parts of our body so they are uh, they are transported from uh, the one part of the body that is a part of extraction to the various parts of the body that is a uh, to the towards the part of utilization so in case of human being uh, the transport system includes or consists of uh, mainly three structures one is a circulating fluid which we call it as a blood a muscular pumping organ which is nothing but our heart and for the blood to flow that is a, the blood vessels there are three types of blood vessels we find that is arteries veins and the capillaries okay so the main function of uh, the transport system is transportation of uh, nutrients uh, laid and salts oxygen hormone waste products like nitrogenous waste carbon dioxide okay then uh, the medicines what you take okay so all those things are transported from a, uh, one part to other part of the body okay so now let us study these uh, components of transport system one by one first let us consider blood so when we hear the word blood the first uh, color that strikes to our mind is a red color okay because blood is a red colored fluid connective tissue if you can remember from your previous classes about uh, the tissues okay that uh, any tissue it requires two main components one is a non-living substance which we call it as a matrix and uh, also cells it will have cells okay so blood is considered as a connective tissue fluid connective tissue because it's in liquid state therefore it is called as a fluid then it's a connective tissue because it connects one part to other part of the body whereas it is a tissue because it has a non-living matrix and a cells cells like a wbc rbc and platelets matrix is nothing but a, the plasma okay so therefore it is considered as a fluid connective tissue the red color of the blood is mainly because it has a, a 
red colored respiratory pigment called a hemoglobin this hemoglobin is found in a red blood corpuscles rbcs okay so it is called as a respiratory pigment is mainly because hemoglobin has higher affinity towards oxygen so whenever it comes across oxygen it immediately binds with the oxygen so the main purpose of the hemoglobin is a transportation of the oxygen when it combines with the oxygen it is called as a oxyhemoglobin and the blood consisting of a oxyhemoglobin is called as oxygenated blood so generally uh, this oxyhemoglobin is formed when blood passes through lungs where the exchange of gases takes place carbon dioxide is given out in the alveoli and uh, the oxygen is taken up okay and it this blood is transported to various cells for utilization when the oxygenated blood reaches cells or tissues it gives up the hemoglobin gives up oxygen okay and the blood takes up the carbon dioxide right so the blood with the carbon dioxide is called as a deoxygenated blood okay so this is what are the difference between oxygenated and a deoxygenated blood in an average normal uh, human adult we have average volume of a blood that is 5 to 5.5 liters so if you can remember from your previous class 9th class tissues chapter the composition of the blood so blood consists of mainly two components a non living plasma which constitutes about 55% of the total blood volume it mainly consists of a water which is about 90% okay and remaining are uh, dissolved substances like uh, there are uh, respiratory some amount of respiratory gases are dissolved in it like carbon dioxide there will be nitrogenous wastes then uh, some medicines if you have taken hormones enzyme then uh, blood proteins like albumin uh, thromboplastin prothrombin all those uh, uh, proteins will be there okay so they are present in the plasma in addition to that blood also contains corpuscles or what we call them as a blood cells okay so there are mainly three types of blood cells we find the first type are called as erythrocytes which are called as a the rbc red blood cells or red blood corpuscles these are red in color because of presence of a hemoglobin okay so rbc or the red blood cells as you can uh, see here it is a circular uh, shaped cell which is having a depression okay from the side if you see this rbc okay so this is how the rbc will appear it will have a depression in the center from the depression in the center from the side if you see it will appear like a a biconcave structure why because the mammalian rbc do not have nucleus we call it as a enucleated cell okay so now the question arises why the mammalian rbc do not have a nucleus it is because the rbcs have sacrificed their nucleus so that they can accommodate more amount of hemoglobin so that they can increase the efficiency of uh, oxygen transportation and uh, one more point to to remember is that all mammals have enucleated rbc means there is no nucleus except one mammal that is a camel camel has a nucleated rbcs okay then next coming to the leukocytes there is a wbc cells okay or white blood corpuscles as you can remember from the, your previous class that again wbc Uh, cells or white blood uh, corpuscles have again divided into two types as a granulocytes and a granulocytes okay uh, so all together they will provide a immunity main function is immunity okay then lastly we have these uh, blood uh, platelets actually blood platelets are nothing but they are the fragments of a, a cell a particular cell which is called as a megakaryocyte
megakaryocyte uh, this cell is found in a, our bone marrow when this cell mature it uh, breaks into smaller fragments which are called as a the blood platelets okay mega means large carrion means nucleus cyton means cell so it's a cell with a large sized nucleus okay so that is what the mega karyocyte now let us quickly look at uh, the difference between three types of uh, blood cells so synthesis remember that all the blood cells are synthesized in a bone marrow okay then the number is 4.5 to 5 million per microliters of blood wbc are uh, 5000 to 8000 platelets are 2 lakh to 5 lakh shape is a biconcave you remember that uh, they are biconcave from the side they will appear spherical and biconcave mainly because mammalian rbcs do not have a nucleus wbc are either amoeboid or rounded uh, especially the uh, monocytes and all are rounded whereas uh, the phagocytes are uh, amoeboid in structure because they will move just like amoeba uh, producing uh, pseudopodial like structures so that uh, they can engulf any foreign body and protect us from uh, invaders platelets are various in shape like triangular rectangular or some other irregular in shape because they are just fragments of a mega karyocyte cell next nucleus so in case of rbc nucleus is a uh, absent so it's a uh, enucleated in wbc we have uh, there is a presence of nucleus then uh, again platelets they are enucleated they don't have nucleus so just to remind all mammals are with the enucleated rbc except a camel then the lifespan rbc on an average they live around 120 days wbc's white blood corpuscles they live for about 12 hours to few days then platelets have a lifespan of about 7 to 10 days now coming to the function the main function of rbc is a transport of oxygen white blood corpuscles is uh, to provide immunity then platelets play a very important role in a blood clotting okay which prevents a blood loss when uh, there is a rupture of blood vessel or any injury now coming to the functions of a uh, blood main function of the blood is a uh, transport of material like uh, digested end products proteins then uh, there will be all together nutrients uh, then uh, hormones, enzymes, medicines if you have taken, okay. Then uh, there will be waste products which have to be eliminated from the body. They also will be transported from site of extraction to our excretory system that is kidneys. All those things, all those transportation work is carried out by blood. Next, it also regulates uh, the blood pH uh, and uh, the body temperature, okay. So as you know that uh, uh, we are homeothermic organisms, means we are warm blooded animals and we maintain our constant body temperature. So blood plays a vital role in maintaining a body temperature. Next is a, they provide immunity because they are having a WBC cells, white blood corpuscles, which will help in uh, providing a immunity to our body. Then it maintains water balance, okay. And very importantly, the clotting which prevents a blood loss, platelets platelets they will uh, uh, help in uh, so the platelets they will help in uh, blood clotting okay it prevents a uh, blood loss now how do these platelets will help in blood uh, blood clotting uh, actually the blood clotting process is a cascade of chemical reaction it's a very complex process it requires around uh, 12 clotting factors so whenever there is an injury if uh, blood vessel ruptures there will be continuous blood loss which may result in loss of a uh, blood pressure and uh, the person may bleed to death so to prevent that our body has a uh, the clotting mechanism okay where the platelets they will form a mesh around uh, the blood vessel suppose this is uh, this is the blood vessel okay uh, so blood is uh, flowing if there is uh, any rupture or injury okay so these are uh, the blood cells which are flowing through the blood okay so if there is injury the blood will be flowing outside uh, the blood vessel so immediately the clotting factors and platelets 
become activated and they will form a mesh okay the the proteins which are uh, liquid in form they'll uh, harden and form a the mesh like structure where a plaque is formed all the white uh, sorry the, the cells blood cells will get uh, trapped in this mesh and uh, they will block the blood flow this is called as a plaque or clot you might have come across the blood clots at the wounds okay a dark colored okay so this is a uh, how the blood loss is prevented by injury okay so this is what about uh, the composition and functions of uh, blood thank you very much